Good day everyone, I am here to explain our day 4 activity or our laboratory exercise number 2 which tackles about basic concepts of process dynamics and control. Let's begin with our different controls, specifically the feedback control loop. So the tra traditional way to control a process is to measure the variable that is to be controlled, compare its value with the desired value, and feed the difference into a feedback controller that will change a manipulated variable to drive the control variable back to the desired value. So in feedback control loop, we have our disturbance entering the process. So the, in the process, um, it will create an output in which a measuring device will measure to see if there is a disturbance. If such disturbance is measured by the measurement, dev measurement device, it will be transmitted into the feedback controller, wherein the feedback controller will compare this in our desired value or our set point. And if, if an error is um, found, the control valve will um, input the manipulated variable for us to have the control variable. So the control variable is in compliance with the desired value to maintain optimum operating conditions. The next thing is our feed forward control. So here, the disturbance is de detected as it enters the process and an appropriate change is made in the manipulated variable such that the controlled variable is held constant. Thus, we begin to take corrective action as soon as a disturbance entering the system is detected, instead of waiting for the disturbance to propagate all the way through the process before a correction is made. So unlike the first control loop, here the disturbance is um, directly detected as soon as it enters the process so that we can have our manipulated variable to correct the error made by the disturbance in the process so that our output would just be the optimum operating conditions or our desired value. So here it is a one-way process. It does not go back to the feed forward controller because the, feed, the disturbance is measured or detected as soon as it enters the process. Hence, the manipulated by the variable or the corrective actions is already made for us to proceed with the process and make our output in compliance with our set standards. So for the procedure number one, we are to determine different chemical processes and its block diagram and explanation. So let's start with absorption. So in an absorption, it is a process in which a gas mixture contacts liquid solvent and a component of the gas dissolved in the liquid. So, a figure here illustrates an absorption column. So, this is an example of an, an absorption column or an absorption tower or simply absorber. So, the solvent will enter at the top of the column and it will go down and emerge at the bottom while the gas enter on the bottom of the column flows up it will um, go up and it will have a contact with our solvent or the or the liquid solvent that we are using and it will leave at the top so the bottom here will contain um, those components that we want to absorb while the top um, portion will contain the concentrate of the um, solution that we are um, wanting to get in this operation. So next is condensation. So it is a process in which an entering gas is cooled and or compressed causing one or more of the gas components to liquefy. So condensation is a very common um, operation in every um, processes because um, it is used to transform um, vapor components into um, a liquid. So say for example, if we have some vapor gas that we want to, um, to, to be in a liquid form, so we will use condensation. So in this process, we will have a gas entering our feed and of course, it will leave with a gas phase component and a liquid phase component. So this portion is just for the heat exchanging.
Next is crystallization. So it is a process which, in which a liquid solution is cooled or solvent is evaporated to an extent that solid crystals of solute form. So here, um, a liquid solution um, will be cooled. So the feed liquor here will contain a liquid solution in, in which a crystallizer will cool it down to the point then that uh, crystals are made. So here, um, it will, um, the output is comprised of water and a slurry. And of course, we will have our separated liquor here in which we are to recycle. So the crystals can be achieved by filter or centrifuge in which we can um, serve as product or a byproduct of the operation depending on the process being done. So next is distillation. So in distillation, it is a process in which a mixture of two or more species is fed to a vertical column that contains either a series of vertically spaced horizontal plates or solid packing through which a fluid can flow. So distillation is another common, pro common um, operation in a unit process, you see. So in distillation, we are just... Um, separating components so say for example if there is a mixture in the feed so we are to perform distillation if we can separate those components by their boiling points so if one has a higher boiling point and the other one has not so the first one that will boil or the first one that will be transformed into gas phase will become our distillate and the one or the heavy components re uh, will remain at the bottom so the next is drying. So it is a process of uh, in which a set wet solid is heated or contacted with a hot gas stream, causing some or all of the liquid wetting the solid to evaporate. So in drying, um, um, wet solids are the feed. You see, so it will undergo a drying unit in which um, all the uh, liquid components will be dried or will be separated. So it will go with the humid air, giving us with the dry product. So next is evaporation. So evaporation is also referred to as vaporization. It is a process in which a pure liquid or liquid mixture or solvent in a solution is vaporized. So in evaporation, um, we are to create a concentrated solution using by um, evaporating um, those components that are easily evaporated by the operation. So as you can see, we have here our feet. So by having the steam, we are evaporating um, those components that are easily evaporated. So that is the vapor. Then we will have our concentrated product. So next is extraction, or it is also referred to as liquid extraction. So it is a process in which a liquid mixture of two species is contacted in a mixer with a third liquid that is immiscible or nearly immiscible with the feed carrier. So extraction is a liquid extraction. So say for example, we have our feed. So our feed is composed of A and B. So our extractant or our solvent that we will be using, say for example, we have letter C. So by passing the feed, which is composed of A and B, and um, um let and letting it contact with the, our solvent, which is denoted as C, so we can extract the B, which is miscible to letter C. Um, given that this um solvent is immiscible with that of the solution. So the letter B will be um, going with our solvent, hence it will provide our extract, the C and B. And our raffinate will be mainly composed of the A. So our A here is our desired product and some traces of letter B. So the next operation is, of course, filtration. So it is a process in which a slurry of solid particles suspended in a liquid passes through a porous medium. So in filtration, we are just to separate some solid liquid um, solution. So say for example, if we have, it is very common, especially in cooking, 
when we are uh, um, using colanders and sieves and such. So here, of course, our solid components will remain as the filter cake while the liquid components will be passed through. So it depends on the operation or the operator, which is to be considered the product of the operation. So next is flash vaporization. So this is the process in which a liquid feed at high pressure is suddenly exposed to a lower pressure, causing some vaporization to occur. The vapor product is rich in the more volatile components of the feed and the residual liquid is rich in the less volatile components. So um, here it, as stated, so flash, flash vaporization is when a feed of high pressure is suddenly exposed to low pressure because we all know that at, at high pressure, um, there are various um, solutions that appears to be in liquid phase. So when exposed to a sudden um, high pressure drop, some tends to become gas. So in that case, the gas will be the one exiting here and the liquid will be the one exiting at the bottom. So our gas here, of course, will become is the volatile components or the vapor part of the blast vaporization while the liquid part is composed of the less volatile components. The next is heat exchanging. So this is also a very common process in a unit operation. So in heat exchanging, a process unit flow through flow through which two flu fluid streams at different temperatures flow on opposite sides of a metal barrier. Heat is transferred from the stream at a higher temperature through the barrier to the other stream. So here, um, in heat exchanging, we are just using some heating agent for us to heat another stream. So say for example, here we have cooling. So our process fluid will be entering our, our equipment and here it will be passed with the cooling medium so here the cooling medium will get the heat from the process fluid hence it will create an output that is the fluid same fluid but with lower temperature on the other hand our cooling medium from low temperature it will have a high temperature since it gained the temperature from the process fluid so um, the next is stripping. So it is a process in which a liquid containing a dissolved gas flows down a column and gas flows up the column at conditions such that the dissolved gas comes out of solution and is carried off with the stripping gas. So here, stripping as illustrated, so it is just, um, um, it is just, separating some gas dissolved in a liquid so say for example if we have a feed with dissolved gas so we are using uh, stripping gas to strip that gas strip the dissolved gas from the liquid or separate that dissolved gas from the liquid for us to have a very concentrated liquid instead of those with dissolved gas. So that is the sole purpose of stripping. That's the last for our procedure one. And now let's proceed to procedure two, wherein we are to determine the different instrument instrumentation requirements and of course explain each of one. So this is the figure and here we are to determine each instrumentation and explain each. So from the figure, we have four determined instrumentation requirements. So first is our controller and control valve. So this is that portion on the illustration. So an instrument used to control temperatures and a controller in a temperature control system will accept a temperature sensor such as a thermocouple as input and compare the actual temperature to the desired control temperature or set point. It will then provide an output to a control element. So controller and control valve are just instrument used for control. So basically it, um, it manages or it sets the operation at optimum condition. So next is our sensor or an instrument 
or device that provides for temperature me measurement through an electric signal. So the sensor sends a disturbance in a process. So it serves as a guard or or a managing um, quality assurance. Say for example like that. So it's it guards the operation to see if such disturbance is happening. So the measurement is done through an electro electrical signal. So this electrical signal will be transmitted by transmitter. So presented here. So the transmitter is an instrument that interfaces a temperature sensor to a measure measurement or control device. So those disturbance sensed by the sensor will be transmitted by the transmitter to the control so that we can have necessary corrective actions to return the operation to its optimum condition so it is just um it is interconnected to one another so the sensor will sense the disturbance the transmitter will transmit that signal to the controller and the controller will take the corrective action and of course here we have the trap so a trap is an instrument or a device that only liquid to pass through thus preventing blow through of the steam vapor so a trap is just a it seems like a maintenance um equipment so this is just used to prevent the blow through of the steam vapor so that we can lessen um, the accidents that might happen during the operation. Good day everyone, this is Jamela from group number 4. I am here to discuss about the different process variables and its instrumentation. In terms of instrumentation, controllers, sensors, and transmitters have pressure, temperature, flow rate, and volume as their process variable. On the other hand, we have pressure on condensers and flow rate on pumps. In this slide, we will identify the different process variables for a given heat exchanger. The oil and feed flow rate and inlet temperature is the uncontrolled variable, while the steam flow rate is the controlled variable and the manipulated variable will be the exit temperature. This time, we will have the different process variables in a distillation column. The process variables that are manipulated variable are the reflux, steam, cooling water, and bottoms flow rates. The load disturbances are feed flow rate and the feed composition, and the distillate will be the control. For continuation, the compositions and temperature of all the trays will be the uncontrolled variables. On the other hand, the controlled value variable will be the bottom's product composition, column pressure, base liquid level, and the reflux drum liquid level. So the figure shows a process of fluid on the tube side that is cooled by a cooling water on the shell side. With this type of heat exchanger, the exit temperature of the process fluid will be the manipulated variable and the load disturbance will be the process fluid flow rate. The controlled and uncontrolled variable is the cooling water flow rate and variation in inlet temperature respectively. So for this slide, we are going to tackle about the different process variables for a continuous steered tank reactor or commonly known as CSTR. The feed composition, flow rate, and its temperature are all uncontrolled variables. In this figure, we can see that the crude oil is, a, is broken down or cracked into several lighter petroleum fraction by the heat transferred from a burning fuel-air mixture. The different process variables are thermal cracking furnace, or thermal cracking furnace rather, are as follows. Number one, furnace temperature and heating quality of a fuel are controlled variable. Number two, the amount of excess air in the flue gas and fuel oil ratio are the low disturbances. Number three, 
fuel flow rate is the manipulated variable and number four crude oil composition is the uncontrolled variable so in this slide the different process variables for a batch or semi-batch reactor are presented the controlled variables are reactor and desired temperature coolant flow rate and heat cycle time then the manipulated variable is the endpoint or the final concentration of the batch and the flow of reactants for semi-batch operation is the load disturbance. So in this figure, we can see the schematic diagram of a batch digester in a pulp mill. Both continuous and semi-batch di digesters are used in a paper manufacturing to break down wood chips in order to extract the cellulose thick fibers. The end point of the chemical reaction is indicated by a kappa number, which is a measure of lignin content. The process variables for a batch digester in a pulp mill is as follows. Number one, the controlled variables are its cycle time, digester pressure, and the digester temperature. And number two, the end point or the final concentration of the batch will be the manipulated variable. So in conclusion, it is important to understand the basic components of the process dynamics and control. For certain examples, we were able to determine the input-output streams to know the proper instrumentation and identification of the processes that are essential in the chemical process industries. We were able to determine the basic concepts of a variable specifications involving different variables such as manipulated, controlled, and disturbance variables. All of these are the basic concepts of the process and dynamics that need to be taken into consideration in designing a plant. Once again, I am Jamela and I hope everyone will have a wonderful day. Stay safe always.